Hi, I'm Mike Oner, the In Group in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a review and discussion on the new 2022 remix of Revolver. This is the Super Deluxe 4LP box set. Primarily what I like to talk about is what do I think of the remixes and what do I think of the new all analog mono cut that's in this box as opposed to the original all analog mono cut that was in the box set versus the original mono cut from the 60s. And then I'll talk about the rest of it a little bit. So I got this box set on Wednesday. I've been living with it for about three days. We've probably played it five or six times at the store. So I've heard it a lot at this point. I've heard a lot of the remix. I heard a lot of the alternate takes. I did a lot of that listening at the store. I didn't really listen to the mono at the store because I really wanted to listen to that in an environment that I'm really familiar with, which is my home system. So I did a lot of that listening the last two days. But let me talk to you first about the outtakes. I've been a big fan of the outtakes on a lot of the box sets previous. And I want to say Abbey Road and the White Album have been my two favorite outtakes box sets. The Escher demos are just like a must listen to for the White Album. And the Abbey Road session stuff is just so fantastic. It kind of has a jam vibe to it. And it's very listenable and you can listen to it over and over again. The outtakes on this, although they're fun to listen to, and I've listened to them a few times, this gets a little more in the weeds. And the reason being is you're getting a lot of re repetition as far as takes go. And that, that makes for a little bit more difficult listen to five times in. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, like side four of the bonus discs, you got one, two, three, you got four takes of Yellow Submarine. You got four takes of a moly sleeping. You know, so it's that kind of three takes have got to get you into my life. It's been an extremely fun listen. Hearing John playing on, you know, singing Yellow Submarine, kind of a, the way that that song started and what it became. Fantastic to hear that, you know. That was amazing. I'm not discounting that. I just wonder if this is something that I'm going to listen to five years from now as opposed to the regular album, that's not the case. I will say that's the case for the Escher demos. Typically when I wanna hear the White Album, I now go and put on the Escher demos. That's like seems to be the thing I wanna to listen to the most when it comes to that. I don't see that here as far as the alternate takes. It is super fun. And to be honest, if I could curate maybe like a mixtape of this, that might be cool. I could see myself doing that. But yeah, that back-to-back -back repetition, Fantastic to listen to a few times. Not something you really want to hear as a main listen. Although when it comes to the doors, you know, for instance, the LA Woman session stuff, that was such in like a like a jam type of format to where that was listenable to just keep listening to it because it's it was kind of more like them jamming out to it. Where these are very serious, in some cases, you know, when you get towards the final takes, this is seriously them working on these to seriously get these down and move on to the next track. The earlier stuff is kind of more them fooling around and getting a feel for things. But yeah, so that is the bonus discs. Okay, so the remix. The remix is really weird for me. I have a very difficult time. I listen to it, and I guess I've heard this album so many times that it becomes very difficult in a way to like the remix. There's things that have always bothered me about the original. For instance, when you listen to the original mix, mono or stereo, of uh, what is it? Got to get you into your life. Got to get you into my life. Ringo's drums are just not there. Uh, the horns are there. The vocals are there. It's sweet. The guitars are there. Ringo's drums are just buried. You can barely hear the fills. You can barely hear the cymbals. That with the remix is much improved, and you actually get some stereo. Uh, effect to where the drums kind of his fills kind of move across the sound stage so it's very cool that fixes a problem that i've often had with this album and that is certain things just get buried in the elements and i don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon but when i hear that it doesn't sound right it doesn't sound like revolver anymore and although it's very cool and it's neat to be able to hear things the strings on this 
that remixing, demixing process that they use. Essentially, they use a computer program to go back to the album, listen to it, and this computer pulls apart all the instruments and puts it on a normal fading, you know, a normal console, console to where they can fade up and down the different instruments. You know, if they want a little more vocal, a little more drums, a little more snare, it's that kind of technology. But the thing is, it seems like the string sections benefit from this by far and away the most because I will say on the remix your you know the strings wow they just unbelievable the way they sound is fantastic I've never heard it before in that way I mean it's they're really great but I'll say as a whole it might just be because I've listened to this so many times and I'm so familiar with it like a lot of you probably are it just sounds off-putting, I guess, if that makes sense. It sounds better in the sense that they fixed a lot of the problems. And I'm not dis opposed, I'm not opposed to remixes. I love the Pink Floyd Animals remix. It wipes the floor with the original, in my opinion. And to me, it's different, but it doesn't sound wonky. And this kind of has a wonky sound to it. Uh, I'm going to listen to it some more because I want to... I want to give it more of a chance. I probably listened to it five or six times. I want to give it more of a chance. And I will say this too, when I listen to it at the store, it's not, it's no big deal. But my store system is weird and I've got the speakers 30 feet apart. When you listen to it at home, it has a totally different vibe. So it's one of those albums you need to get in front of, sit down and listen to it and pay attention to it. But it's kind of, you know, I kind of felt this way about the Sgt. Pepper remix as well. It was just not Sgt. Pepper, and this just isn't Revolver, you know? It's polished up, but the, some of the vocals kind of sound unnatural. And I don't see, it's weird to comment on these things, and I don't even want to say unnatural. It just doesn't sound right, but that's because I've probably my whole life been listening to it the other way. Uh, the way it layers in the mix is just a little bit funny, you know? So I could see the remix being listened to in the future. The outtakes, mm, that's a tough one. But if you don't have the 2012 mono box set, I could see listening to this a lot. Now let's talk about the 2012 mono box. And I want to say this too, I'll show you a few things. I compared this album, and I didn't want to rush to do this review even though I've had it for three days, because I had a lot of stuff to compare this with. Let's look. So here's some real... Here's some revolvers. You know, I've got a couple of revolvers. I've got box sets down here that have revolvers in it. Uh, the thing is with revolver, you can discount a lot of stuff when it comes to stuff that you can just avoid that's not that good. But the 2022 all analog mono, that was surprising. I was expecting, and from what I heard, they closely followed the 2012 mono recut notes. So the 2012 mono was cut from the original analog tape, all analog, kind of using the notes from the 2019, you know, the original the 60s version. And from what I heard, the 2022, let's pull out some mono. The 2022 was going to be cut using those same notes. I will say, I actually have the hot mix. Mono hot mix. I think I left that at the store because I took some of these to the store to try to get a, a feel, but I got, yeah, I was like, eh, not a fan of this. Let's do it at the house. So I will say the 2022 is better. You know, that's it in a nutshell. If that's all you want to hear, you can turn the video off now. It has, so the 2012 gave us more detail and less compression. The original had more compression on it, which a lot of people might sound satisfying, especially for a band like the Beatles. It was an AM radio band. It kind of has more of that vibe, that 60s rock and roll vibe because of the compression. The 2012 took a lot of that off, and it was a more detailed record. The 2022... I think that was done a little bit, you know, that kind of harkens back to the original 60s version. I feel like there's a little more compression on it. It's cut louder. Uh, my decibel meter and, you know, that I tested it with was four and a half dB in my listening position louder 
than the 2012 cut and very similar to the original cut. So let's see, what do I got here? This is the 2012 from the mono box set. And then this is actually an 80s mono. If you're not familiar with the 80s Beatles stuff in mono, I highly recommend it. So in the 80s, most people don't know this, they did the BC-13 box, but they also did the BC-10 box. This is extremely rare. They only did 2,000 of them. These come up like once a year. So this is like hen's teeth finding this. So forget about that for most people. You can see all the albums in the box there. So this is all of their albums in mono. This is the original mono box set. What's cool about this is they did them all from the original UK stampers. So the stamper that they used to cut the revolver in this is actually the second stamper that was used, you know, after the withdrawn mix. They used the exact same metalwork and they cut it on significantly higher quality vinyl. The thing is with these 80s cuts is you can find all of the albums like that. They're hard. They're hard to find. They only were around for about six to months to a year, I think, is what I heard originally. So they're difficult to find. They're not that common. It's not like the BC-13 box to where they were around for years, you know? So you can find them, but for all the Beatle albums in mono, that's extremely a solid choice. I also have singles. So that's the box set. And I compared it against, this is actually the single disc from that. So the new 2022 has a sound very reminiscent of the original mono mix. And to me, it's just, but it has the detail of the mono box set. So that's kind of, for me, it's like, wow, this is a no brainer. Now I would have to listen to it at great detail because the original mono was fantastic. I feel like overall, I'm going to be listening to the new box set mono more than any other copy of revolver. My initial impression without sitting down and listening to every one of these albums, and I listened to about half of them, but not at the same detail I would listen to them in, in like a shootout uh, to where I spend a week on it. But I will say, I really feel like the 2022 is probably the best sounding overall. That's my initial three days later impression of the album. It has the benefit of a cleaner crispier sound that you're going to get from modern electronics but it has the same vibe and the characteristics of the 60s pressing as opposed to the 2012 kind of has a different sound but still has that clean crisp sound of you know like a more modern record so as a whole i will say i think the biggest hands down the winner here for this box set is the mono mix. Now, if you're a Beatles fan, you're going to want to hear the remix. You're going to want to hear all the outtakes. You're going to show them to your friends and be like, wow, this is, you know, you, you'll geek out over that. That's hands down. I truly believe that. And the, and the stereo mix is a cool way of listening to it. But I think as time goes on, and we're not going to know this until a couple of years from now, I think you're going to hit that mono master over and over and over again because it really does sound great. Now, every record inside of my box set was dirty as hell, dust debris. They needed to be ultrasonically clean, but there was no, da I mean, the, bo the records were nice. No damage, clean as far as sound-wise after they were ultrasonic, but they were dirty. They are in a polyline inner sleeve, but most people, I have to tell them over and over again, records are not made at like, uh, you know, Intel's chip factory in a clean room. They're made in dirty factories, and new records need to be clean, and this box set is no, you know, no exception. It was dirty. It needed to be clean. So let me go over some of my revolvers and I'll kind of show you kind of what I listened to and what I didn't. My first thing I pulled out was, of course, the mono box, the single disc from this mono box. And actually they have different stampers because they did, uh, this is the first stamper, this is the second, or excuse me, this is the second stamper that they went back and used. This was a later stamper, a third stamper. So some of the single discs, I think there's two different, for a revolver anyway, I think there's two different stampers. I think there's a two and a three. And then here, this is a two and a, no, this is a two and a three. And I want to say maybe in the box is a three and a five. Uh, so my single disc actually uses an older stamper, uh, an older lacquer than the red BC-10 box. 
Okay. So, and then of course I compared the 2012. It's the 2012 box set. I didn't even bother to listen to this because this sucks. This is the stereo black box that came out in 2009. Yeah, this is a turd. Uh, I've never really been nuts about the original stereo. So I've got the stereo box set and I've got the singles. I've never been nuts about the Mobile Fidelity 80s titles. Uh, they're not my go-to. I don't really care for any of the American Beatles titles. They are mostly junk. But this is the 70s Capital Blueback. This is an original Parlophone. Stereo first pressing. Really good. Difficult to find a clean copy in. If you want it just for the sound quality, this is not the one I would recommend. I would recommend this one which is actually what you'll find inside the BC-13 box, which I didn't grab, which is essentially the stereo version of that red box set. This to me, if you want a nice, clean, original stereo sound, this is the one you want. These are fantastic. The vinyl quality is higher. Uh, they probably took a little bit better time making these as opposed to the original Beatles records, which they were probably trying to crack out as fast as possible. These are fantastic. They use a lot of the original metal parts for the original BC-13 boxes. So if you look at these, if you go back to the earliest titles, you'll find, let me see if I can show you something here. Oh man, this one doesn't have the inner sleeve. The earliest BC-13 boxes used a lot of the original metal work. So you can go back in that box set and find tube cut metal work in that box. Now, as that box became a little older, they made that into the, almost the middle, of the 80s, they had to recut those lacquers and the sound quality deteriorates. If you look inside the sleeve on the BC-13 box, there's a date on the sleeve of when it was essentially manufactured. You know, the last two digits are the year. The earlier, the better. You got a much higher chance of getting an original lacquer. Now, when you crack it open, you can just look up the dead wax and find out. Actually, here's another one. See if I could show you that sleeve, give you guys. Actually, this is a flip back cover. So this is the first. Okay, so this is gonna be the late 60s. Uh, flip back cover still, but it's on the black Parlophone. These are all great. Again, it's just a matter of finding a nice, clean, quiet one. But when it comes to the Beatles, these Parlophones are my go-tos. Now, ooh, that's, that's an expensive album. If you know, you know. But uh, that's a mono, beautiful near mint copy in the shrink. There's another one, probably uh, just a different beautiful near mint in the shrink. Another one, mono, near mint in the shrink. These all suck. They're horrible. I can't tell you guys enough. If you're only listening to the original Beatles on Capitol, you're not listening to a good sounding record. There's a stereo, another really expensive, desirable album in the shrink. This is got just, you know, when I collect the different plants, whether it's East Coast, West Coast, Jacksonville, there's another stereo. This is probably an Apple. Yeah, there's a little later Apple pressing. The Apple, no good. The Capital, no good. If you want to listen to this album in the original format, I recommend the BC-13 box. I recommend the mono from back in the day. The Japanese red monos are extremely good as well. I left that at the store. Uh, but this new 2012, 22 is fantastic. I can't tell you guys how, I can't recommend this enough. I think this is, this kind of covers the basis for everybody. If you're a Beatles fan, you want to hear all the new stuff. If you don't have the mono box, you want this. They really put together a package designed to check off the boxes for most people. Like I didn't need the 2000 and 12 mono, but I wanted to hear everything else. So I bought the box. So, I think this is going to fit the bill for most collectors and just casual listeners more than any of the other previous boxes did. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a long rambling session of Mike talking about the new Beatles revolver. But again, I wanted to wait on this before I made a video because there was just so much to take in and I wanted to spend some time with it. But I had fun. It's a fun week. It's Beatles week. Anytime you can sit and listen to new Beatles material for an entire week, 
that's good times. As a record store owner uh, who plays the Beatles a lot in the store, everybody loves the Beatles, new employees, new customers, old customers. It's one of those things you can put on and make everybody happy. I find listening to fresh new takes, outtakes, it's exciting. It's been a fun week. So yeah, check us out online, theingroove.com. Until next time.